Hello, I'm Paul Nisi from FrontTowardsGamer.com. And I'm Scott Cates of the Comic Station. And this is issue number 35 for August 28th of 2013. The new releases for today, we're going to kick off with the big one, is from DC Comics Batman Incorporated Special number one. Now, this is, Batman Incorporated is kind of finished, but this is a, uh, Batman's going over the case files of a lot of the number of Batmans. If you're not familiar with Batman Incorporated, basically Batman uh, turned the name into a kind of franchise where other wannabe heroes can license out Batman, certain uh, aspects of it, and become crime fighters themselves. In this one, it's really nice, it's a good overview of the Batman Incorporated mythos and series because it goes over basically a vignette of little various short stories of number of Batmans. First one, and each one has their own style, art style and tone. The first one going over is Batman of Japan and that is a completely different style of uh, the Mexican Batman or uh, the, ba the Knight Batman who's actually dressed up like more of a medieval knight. And it's really nice, it's done well, the stories are quick, they're fun, they're easy, but they all have something to do with being Batman. It's also, how can you go wrong here, there's a bat cow. Come on, gotta love bat cow. Absolutely. So, it doesn't take itself too seriously, obviously, the, the uh, idea behind it as well. But, it's a nice overview, and it ends with a little, will it continue or not? So, it's a nice introduction, it's a nice storyline. If you like Batman Incorporated, this is probably a nice little addition. Uh, if you haven't been reading or you're not up to it and you want to see something about it, this is a nice little introduction as well. For me, personally, I'm not a huge Grant Morrison fan. Who wrote it um, can go a little off the rails for me. Um, but it, it is something that I will actually do because I stopped reading Batman Incorporated, so I will go back and get an overview. And just as a side note, uh, the Bat Cow does appear on the cover of the variant, the 1 in 25 variant. So if you really need to see the Bat Cow, he is on the cover of that. Yes. The next one we have here, I've been looking forward to this ever since we did our interview at the Philadelphia Comic Con with Xenoscope. This is Grim Fairy Tales No Tomorrow. And if you've seen our interview with uh, Raven Gregory, uh, Basically, this is a personal story to him, and there is a note on the back that makes it even more personal. He, In our interview, he went over about some loss, and there is a really touching note in the back uh, that really brings it home as well. Basically, the Kiris, the goddess of death, comes to the Grim Fairy Tales universe. Uh, there's glimpses and shadows of her, and Wherever she goes, destruction follows. Death comes as well. There's really great artwork scenes, really beautiful and meaningful as far as the character. And there is an interesting story where the main character, Pat, can see her and you don't know why exactly. There was a little hint earlier where somebody else kind of saw her, but they were dying. So you don't know, is he touched by death in some manner? So that is really interesting. There's also a little mystery going on with one of the other co-workers and are people making deals with death or how, how and why is she picking certain locations to make mass devastation. In the opening scene there is a 9.1 Richter scale in Denver. Uh, there is a quote in the front that goes over the little intro and I thought it was nice so I want to read it here and I'm going to pick out parts of it is a new horror enters the grim universe and it's one whose name is often spoke in hushed tones and fearful whispers Kiri's the goddess of death will wreak havoc on an unsuspecting earth and one family man will feel the effects more than any other when death arrives at your door there is no tomorrow I thought that was really nice uh, it keeps up the tone very well throughout the entire time of course Xenoscope beautiful artwork uh, Besides Kiri's, there's not too much skin. Uh, her outfit, obviously, judging from the cover. But otherwise, it kept a good, solid tone, and the artwork was really nice. 
there's not much for me to say on the Zenoscope stuff. I like it. Um, you know, we review a lot of it, and it, it's always a little bit lighter than the regular stuff. The artwork's always brilliant. So I, I'm well in favor of picking it up and checking it out. Yes, and there will be some crossover into the Grim Fairy Tale uh, storylines of other ones as well, where uh, Curious might be doing a little uh, cameo in one or the other. The, finally, for our palette cleanser, uh, we have from Dark Horse Comics is Itty Bitty Hellboy. If you can't tell from the cover or the artwork, this is meant for kids, young kids. This isn't even all ages. This is probably for, I want to say, like eight and below. It's Hellboy. You have Hellboy, Abe, John, uh, bad guys like Carl and Rasputin. It's really cute. The artwork really reminds me of Billy and Mandy. And for my age group, and probably actually probably a little below because I watched a lot of cartoons <laughs> and Billy Mandy was one of my favorites so that is not a bad thing at all it's a bunch of short stories some of them only two pages and other ones about six to eight pages so short little blurb stories really good for attention spans really beautiful color artwork uh, almost uh, crayon drawn as you can see from the cover so uh, it's a good introduction for little kids as far as being Hellboy there's some call outs if you're an adult and you're reading it or with the kid, you'll notice certain things, but there isn't too much mythos that's gonna bog a kid down on that. It's just it's nice because a lot of the comics now that are doing that with DC does a lot with Adventures of Superman, Little Gotham. Um, it's just it's good getting the kids to read and these characters are fun. They're not scary in this type mm -hmm. of a scene. Not at all. So it's, it's, an, it's an easier way to sit down with the really little ones and try to introduce them to readings, comics, and other things. So. Yeah, there's uh, some really nice little sense of humor in here. and all. So that was our new releases, and we're going to go over a few reviews coming up next. For our reviews today, we're going to actually start off with another uh, Hellboy series. It is BPRD's Hell on Earth number 110 from Dark Horse Comics. In this review, Leto uh, actually wrote, uh, The series feelings of snatching defeat from the jaws of victory continues. Uh, it, it's a little bit of a downer in the w same way that uh, Walking Dead is a bit of a downer. Every time they look like they're going to actually come out on top, they lose. And this is a solid setup issue and for things to come, artwork is solid and it's light on continuity before so this makes this a nice jumping on point for new readers or fans that have maybe fallen out of favor of the BPRD and the only downside to it is the overly dark tone and the cluttered storyline might turn some people off but otherwise it's a solid BPRD entry and it came out overall very good the next issue we have is the strain the fall number two obviously being a number two doesn't really it ties into the first one didn't really uh, set up a beforehand so if you haven't read the first one this is not a good point to jump into you'll lose track of what characters are who uh, basically it follows a group of ragtag heroes uh, I lose that use that term loosely uh, that are fighting off vampires that have invaded New York it is a Guillermo del Toro uh, novel that's been turned into a comic and as we've seen with other issues of other series doesn't always work out too well. Uh, the art does dip in the action sequence but otherwise the art is passable, it's standard and because of the characters and all the miniature stories going each character's little background story uh, it kind of loses focus and loses forward momentum. It's a kind of middle of the road review for this issue. The next one we have is one of Leo's favorites is Lobster Johnson, The Scent of Lotus number two from Dark Horse Comics. This one is finishing up the scent of a lotus and in this one you find out why the assassin is targeting the Tong, why the Tong as drug runners, what their side of the story is, and makes them a little bit more uh, palatable. And it adds depth, depth of character to Lobster as a person as well, where he makes uh, decisions and points that show where his uh, train of thought is. It, the set, there is a secondary story within it that kind of falls flat and it's kind of just written off. 
The overall pacing uh, is kept up very well. The character depth is added, and it's a really fun, pulpy, uh, punchy pulp issue. Uh, Leto actually, in I quote, Lost Johnson's Senate of the Lotus number two is a great example of conclusion done excellently. So it wraps everything up, it ties in the story, and it makes everything a coherent story. Finally, coming out today is, from Dark Horse Comics again, is number 13 trade paperback. So this is a collection of the number 13. There are about three or four issues in this series, and this collects them. It's a post-apocalyptic story about a child wandering in the wasteland, and he has some strange powers that he's not really aware of. Uh, everyone obviously because it's post-apocalyptic, they're dressing as cowboys because that's what you do. <laughs> and the world, the world creates, the book creates is visually creative, and the story behind it is very smart. But at the same time, it's also c cripplingly flawed. It kind of rehashes a lot of stories that have been done before. And there's some inconsistency, like why does some of the mutants that are in there and some of the storyline in it. Uh, number 13 is ultimately a pretty fun read. The world's Im world is imaginative to look at and with some really cool character design, but it's pasted over shallow story that borrows a lot from tropes from better works. Basically, it rehashes a lot and it doesn't. It has some interesting potential, but never fully lives up to it. It did get a slightly better than mediocre score, and if you want to see the full reviews of any of these reviews that. Leto kindly did for us. You can always check him out on FrontTowardsGamer.com. All right, for my review, uh, recommendation this week, it's basically a new book that's been out. Uh, this is issue number three of Lazarus from Image Comics, written by Greg Rucka. Um, I really like this story. This is in my top five of the year so far. Um, it basically, it, it kind of reminds me of, of the move, the original movie Rollerball, mm -hmm. where everything is dictated by corporations and Rollerball. Here, it's dictated by families, food businesses you either are with these families or you are part of the wasteland and it follows the story of this Lazarus who is part of this family is basically the protector of a family all these families have one kind of like an enforcer exactly uh, we did a little preview a uh, little uh, new releases update on one of our previous comic station of Lazarus number one uh, yeah basically she's an enforcer of this family mm -hmm. um, and, and she just I mean it's really I just find it really interesting it's, it, you know, all these post-apocalyptic wasteland kind of things that are running around. This is a slightly different take on it. So it's held my interest so far, uh, through the first two issues anyway. I'm looking forward to reading this, um, which I will probably do tonight. And, uh, you know, I would say pick it up. And, you know, so far it has mm -hmm. not disappointed me. Yeah, I know a lot of people have said really good things about this uh, series. And I was interested, especially coming off the first issue, uh, there was starting to be little hints of turmoil within her character mm -hmm. that had some good potential. Absolutely, and they, they really did explore it into the second issue. Good. Alright, so that has been our Comic Station issue number 35 for August 28th, 2013. I am Paul Nisi from Front Toward Gamer. And I'm Scott Cates of the Comic Station. And as always, we will see you next week.